Aloha y'all, I've got my pearls on, I've got my iced tea, so you know what that means. We're gonna be cooking something delicious in the kitchen. And of course, Bubba, number one kitchen dog, is right here with me. So here's a riddle for you. We have lots of ingredients behind me. So what do bread flour, zucchini, pineapples, our gorgeous mangoes from our tree, squash, kimchi, Italian tomatoes, Parmesan cheese, lots of spices, what do they all have in common? Well, to find out, stay tuned for Aloha Y'all. And here's a little hint. This pizza peel is gonna help us out. Today we are making New York style pizza. So you're gonna have a great slice, just like you can get in New York City. Let me show you a little clip of our visit that inspired this whole day. Think about it, Manhattan's an island, Hawaii's an island, it's a match made in heaven. When you come to New York City, you gotta get a slice of pizza. And the way you know it's real New York pizza is you fold it in half. And this is what I wanna recreate when I get back home. We're high above Times Square. We have the Hudson River out one side and the Empire State Building out the other. So let's have a slice of New York pizza. That's amazing. New York pizza on the next Aloha, y'all. For today's New York style pizza, you're going to need bread flour, and then I use Hawaiian sea salt, a little bit of sugar, extra virgin olive oil, and some honey, about a tablespoon. Don't forget the yeast and the warm water. And that's the secret to a good New York pizza. It's not too thick, it's not too thin, it's a Goldilocks pizza, just right. So the first thing that we want to start with is one and one third cups of warm water. Not hot, because remember, yeast is a live thing, a living thing. To that, we have to have something for the yeast to eat, so we're going to add about a tablespoon of honey. Your favorite honey will do. Just a little bit of sugar, just to help the honey out. Just about a teaspoon. Now it's time for the yeast. So it's kind of a heaping tablespoon. Just to make sure that the yeast and the honey fall in love to get that yeast to bloom. This is called the blooming part. Look at these. This is what happens in about five minutes. It's truly magic. Now here's something important that I'm telling you as your dear friend. If your yeast doesn't do something like this, then you have dud yeast. There's no bringing it back. It is not alive anymore. Toss it out, go to the store and get some more yeast. It has to eat the sugar and the honey and then it belches and then it makes all this gas, so remember that. Now we're ready to start making some New York style pizza dough. Remember, we always scoop and level. That's good so far. And if you don't have a mixer, you can always, remember they were making pizza and pasta long before <laughs> KitchenAids were invented. So you can do this all on your counter. You're just gonna have to have a little bit more elbow grease. Up to three cups of flour now. Bread flour, not all purpose, not self-rising. You need bread flour. On low again, and we're gonna start adding our last cup of flour. Right before you add your last scoop, a little bit of salt. Here's a little tip for you. If you find that your dough wants to start crawling up on the, on the dough hook, put a, just a touch of olive oil. Get out your pastry brush, and I love this silicone one. And then just brush the top, and it's gonna keep the dough in where it needs to be in the bowl. So right before you get to the last half cup here, we're going to add our extra virgin olive oil. That's gonna give it a good moist base. So it's two tablespoons. Good thing about this, it will really make you appreciate the next time you order 30 minute pizza. You can always add more flour, but you can't take it out. So that's why we wanna wait till the very end, see what it needs. But you need to let it rest. We're not letting it rise, we're just letting the dough rest because they've all met each other. They're gonna hang out a little bit. So in 15 minutes, we're gonna come back and knead the dough. Just resting. Now it's time for the kneading. 
If you want to, you can take it out now. Put some flour, bench flour on your counter and just start kneading away about 10 minutes. But I have this nice friend in the kitchen, so I'm going to let him do the job. We are going to knead this for seven minutes. So I expect you to stay tuned for the whole seven minutes while this is kneading. Just kidding. We'll come back after this is all ready. But now would be a great time for you to go to your computer or your phone and write me at alohayall at live.com. That's aloha, Y-A-L-L, -L, at L-I-V-E dot com. Or if you want to check out this recipe and others, go to my blog and website, alohayallkitchen.com. That's alohayallkitchen.com. So write me a note because it makes me so happy to hear from you. And we're going to let this wonderful New York City pizza dough do its thing. This has been working hard. Been kneading it for seven minutes. Let's go ahead and turn it off. Raise the roof here and get our dough off. Oh, it's beautiful. And guess what? This is really going to be enough dough for two huge pizzas. It doesn't seem like it, but it will. Add the oil to your bowl. Get your dough into a nice smooth ball on top, tucking it in. Put it in there. This is when we're going to let it rise. That yeast has been working hard. You saw what it did the first proofing. Now's the rising part. So we're creating all those air pockets. It makes it nice and soft and chewy, like a New York style pizza. We're lucky in Hawaii. It's nice and warm and humid, so things rise pretty well. But if you want it to rise even faster, here's my trick. Make some iced tea. How does that make it rise? Because boil some water in your microwave, and then we take the boiling water out, put your tea bags in, and then put this whole thing in the microwave. Do not turn the microwave on. But now you have this moist, warm environment. Again, boil some water in your microwave, get it nice and steamy in there, about three minutes, take the water out, and then put your dough that you want to rise in the microwave. Do not turn it on. In an hour, you're going, this is going to rise. The ingredients that you're going to need for this amazing Italian red sauce are canned tomatoes. I always use the San Marzano Italian tomatoes, the whole ones. I think they're the best. A little bit of tomato paste, some extra virgin olive oil, again, my Hawaiian sea salt, anchovies, and assortment of spices, Italian seasoning, to include some garlic powder, some basil, and oregano. Then we're also going to put some fresh garlic and fresh shallots and half a whole onion. A little bit of sugar to take out the acidity and then some fresh basil and fresh oregano for my garden. All right, now it's time, we've already made our pizza dough, it's time to make our amazing sauce. Just a warning that if you've only had jarred spaghetti sauce, this is gonna change your life and your family will no longer eat jarred sauce. They will want this all the time. So we melted some butter, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. We are starting in a very low heat pan. We're going to put our garlic in here. We don't want any color on this gar garlic. We're just sweating it out. We're going to put our shallots. Okay. If you have some picky eaters, have them go run an errand, go get a bottle of wine, go pick flowers from your yard, go do something because they're not going to want to hear this. But the secret to an amazing sauce our anchovies. We're gonna find these, guess what? Where they sell spam and tuna and those kind of things. Anchovy fillets, you want them in the olive oil. They come in cans or they come in bottles. We're gonna put six anchovy fillets. Guess what, no one will ever know. And if you've ever had Worcestershire sauce or fish sauce, you've had an anchovy. So very low heat, we are just going to melt the anchovies. Okay, I've added half a cut onion. Do not chop it up, it's just for flavor and you're gonna fish it out at the end. If you notice that your anchovies in the olive oil are starting to bubble or sizzle, then you want to take it off the heat. Remember, we do not want to color, toast, or brown the garlic. It's time for the plum tomatoes, the whole peeled tomatoes. Thank goodness I have my New York apron on because they want to splash. And when I am making a chili, or a spaghetti sauce, something with canned tomatoes, I leave it on here. This way I can put the spoon in in between stirring and not get your countertop dirty. It looks like a lot, but it's going to concentrate and thicken up. Now you want to give it a little toss. This is the easiest sauce, and I'm telling you, it's amazing. 
I want to hear from you when you make this. Because the tomatoes are a little acidic, we're just going to add one teaspoon of sugar. Now let's just start adding our spices. Here's a tip. If you start doing your spices over the pot, the steam is going to get into your spice jar and then it's going to clump. Have you had that happen? So always do your spices off to the side. This is plain Italian seasoning that's got everything in there, so do it over your hand. Crush it if you want to release some of the oils. You're going to let this cook for about an hour on medium low. You notice that we're not adding any salt even though we have it? Because it's going to condense down, it would get really salty if you seasoned to taste with the salt. So always add the salt at the end when it's at the consistency that you want. When your tomato sauce starts getting really thick, consistency, all you need is a potato masher. Just go around in your pot. You don't have to dirty another pot. This is a very rustic sauce, but once you make it, you will be having Italian night every night. We're going to use this in our pizza. We're going to use it with our zoodles. Homemade Italian sauce couldn't be easier. And I always make it in a cast iron skillet because the iron of it is leached out when the tomatoes, the acidic tomatoes are in there. So you get a little healthy dose of some iron. Purposely, we made a lot of delicious Italian red sauce, enough for you to have some pasta dishes. I'm going to show you something that you are going to love. And guess what? It is sweeping the country. It's called zoodles. Ever had a zoodle? Well, this is zucchini, and we are going to make a noodle out of it. Because everybody loves pasta, spaghetti, but then you get that awful carb coma where you have to fall asleep. So let's do a zoodle. When, I have to tell you, once you do a zoodle, you're going to be thinking of all the incredible ways that you can use this. See if you like it or not. Get one of these. They're very inexpensive. You just put the zucchini in there and you turn it. You don't have to peel your zucchini, but I like it peeled. I like it to look as close to pasta as possible. But for a cold salad, especially a Thai pad, pad Thai or one with the peanut sauce, I'd leave the, the peel on. Look at this. Is this amazing? Beautiful noodles <laughs> from a zucchini. Here's your pasta. Now let me show you another way because this, these are the training wheels of zoodles. See if you like this first before you go out and get the big one. Let me get this squash and zucchini peeled and come back with me and I'm going to show you super zoodles. So here's our zucchini noodles, our zoodles. <coughs> That was mango. Here's our zoodles from our little hand, hand zoodalizer. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Here's all of our zucchini and our yellow squash, and we have that peeled and cut in half. Folks, you're going to love this. When you have fallen in, in love with zoodles and you are obsessed and you're thinking about all the ways that you're going to do them, then you're ready to bump yourself up to the full size. It has a little pin in it. Well, let's talk about this. Okay. This is a spiralizer. It works for any kind of hard vegetables. It will do sweet potatoes. It will do carrots. And of course, we know it will do zucchini. And it has different kind of blades here for the different sides. And they fit into this nice little door here. Folks, this thing is sharp. And look at this. This is not anything for kids to play with. Sharp blades, sharp metal pointy things. So just remember that. I say that because it's so much fun. Everybody is going to want to play with this. But it's not a toy. So we take the pin, we put it right through the center. I'm so excited to show you this. <laughs> then you have the little comb here with the teeth. Bubba, are you excited too? Bubba's excited. Are we ready? We need to have something to catch these in. Now we're ready. Y'all, is this great or what? And it's got little suction cups to keep it in place. One <laughs> giant spiral noodle out of a zucchini. And guess what Bubba loves? There you go. He loves the zucchini. Now, let's do, <laughs> all the dogs are excited. Let's do a yellow squash. The great thing about the yellow squash is the color makes it look like really rich pasta egg noodles. So this is fantastic if you're looking for a way for yourself or those in your family, your loved ones, bye -bye. <laughs> to eat more vegetables. Imagine a big bowl 
of amazing zoodles with your homemade pasta sauce, good Parmesan cheese. How about making chicken Parmesan on a bed of these zoodles? Let's do it again. I could do this all day. I think it's so much fun. And it's really easy to clean up. Bubba? <laughs> we get the rest of this zucchini and yellow squash zoodled. So join me back here in my kitchen in Aloha, y'all. Look at all these amazing zoodles that we have. Remember, this is yellow squash and green zucchini that we peeled and we spiralized. Looks perfect now, right? You want to throw some sauce on it. But there's a lot of water in that. And it's really going to make your sauce watery. So here's my tip. I took a colander earlier, about two hours ago, with this much zucchini noodles, the zoodles, and I salted them with some Hawaiian sea salt, put them in a colander, sprinkled around, and tossed them. So that has pulled the water out of these zoodles. Just to let you know how much water this size and this much water came out. That's a lot, and that would really make your sauce watery. Let's cook our zoodles now with our pasta sauce. So this pan, I hope it looks familiar. It's the same one that Anthony Bourdain said that we should buy in New York City at the restaurant supply place. So trust me, I was not the first one to go in that place and say, I want the pan that Anthony Bourdain had. A Little bit of olive oil. Remember we took our zoodles and we pre-salted them to get some of the moisture out. And like flour noodles, you're not gonna boil them. They're wet enough. We just wanna dry them and give them a little bit of flavor and a little bit of olive oil and heat. Now, Sweet Sugar and I took a pasta baking class, the kind, regular pasta, and um, the guy was from Italy, and he was laughing, kind of saying Americans like a big thing of pasta with a big pile of sauce on the top. But the Italian way to do it is have your noodles, put them in the pot, and then add the sauce and coat everything. Get all of your zoodles covered. Is this a great way to eat your vegetables or what? Yellow squash, green zucchini, homemade <coughs> pasta sauce. Amazing. And of course, we had to add a little cheese on top. <coughs> Fresh basil. Zoodles, homemade pasta sauce. Let's get started on making our pizza crust, our New York City pizza crust. And you can see I have my New York City apron on. Okay, we're ready to make our pizza. Our dough has risen. It's puffed up. I've already punched it down. Let's talk about what kind of pan you're gonna use. This is a traditional kitchen supply pizza pan. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And then you probably have one of these, a pizza stone. You have to put this in the oven before you preheat it. If you preheat your oven, you get a hot oven, then you put this cold stone in there, it's gonna crack. So remember that. A lot of times your oven's preheated and you're thinking, I forgot to put the stone in, right? So think about it. You have to put the stone in when you turn the oven on. Now this sad little pan, I love it. My mama gave it to me when I went away to college. It was my first piece of real kitchen. <laughs> and then here's my latest pan. You can see it's got some holes in it, can you? And that really helps to make that crispy crust. So remember, we've made enough dough for two pizzas. So we're gonna make the classic New York pizza that everybody loves. It has all the colors of the Italian flag. It has white mozzarella, red tomatoes, and beautiful green basil leaves. And we're gonna stick some pepperoni on it because it's my favorite kind of pizza. Then we're going to make an Aloha Y'all one. Okay, so let's talk about the Aloha part of it. Again, it's on a New York style crust, but we are going to have chicken teriyaki on it and some kimchi. It's going to be amazing. The y'all part is I'm making it in, wait for it, let me get the pan and show you. You're not gonna believe it. Here's the y'all part. This is one giant cast iron skillet. Can you believe it? And we're going to make our Aloha y'all pizza in that. It's scorching hot. It's been in a 500 degree oven. Here's the thing about pizza dough. If it doesn't want to stretch, it's seizing up, just relax. Step away from it, have some tea, write me. <laughs> if you're good and can spin it up in the air, then ooh, come show me how to do that. Lift it up, stretch it out. We stretched out our pizza dough and we've let it rest a little while to see if it's going to pull back. It's doing really well. Let's put this up here and get this one started. 
You don't want so much that it drips out of these holes. All right, so how are we going to get this on that? Easy, look. Peel the parchment off. We're going to pre-bake this a little bit, five minutes. The whole pizza only takes 10 to 12. Now that's quicker than delivery. So we're gonna put this in a 500 degree oven. Remember, you already have your pizza stone in there. So here's our pre-baked, little par-baked pizza. It's hot, y'all, so be careful. Here's that amazing red Italian sauce. So I have some mozzarella cheese. I would suggest you're going to all this effort, do not use the pre-shredded. It's coating in a desiccant, which is like cornstarch or potato starch, something to keep all of the shreds separate. You don't want that on your pizza. Just slice your own mozzarella. And you want to add after your mozzarella is Parmesan, real Parmesan that comes in a block, not the kind that comes in a can. So I'm gonna use the big size of the grater to get a lot of this Parmesan added. And then we're gonna save some to finish at the end. Remember, Parmesan has a lot of salt in it. It's very richly flavored, so you don't need that much. Simple, basic, yummy pizza. Then let's add some sliced pepperoni on top, because who doesn't like pepperoni on their pizza? Okay, so we have two colors of the Italian flag. Now we need the green. So luckily I have some fresh basil from my garden, and this is actually Thai basil. Let's put this, oh, that smells so good your New York pizza straight out of the oven. We're going to embellish it with just a little bit of Parmesan on the top. This way I'm holding my microplaner upside down so I can see how much Parmesan I'm getting. <laughs> Imagine that, Bubba barking over cheese and pepperoni and pizza. Pizza is so good that you will not be feeding the crust to the dogs. You will want to eat every bite of it. So this pizza is way too hot to eat. Number one, you're going to burn the top of your mouth. Number two, if you don't let it settle in, then the whole top will slide off. And let's start on our Aloha Y'all pizza. Now it's time for the mega cast iron skillet. Let me get it out of the oven. Remember, it is scalding hot, and it has been sitting in a 500 degree oven. So we don't have to oil it up, because remember, cast iron is, if you've seasoned it properly, and if you haven't, go back to one of my earlier episodes. It will be nonstick. We're getting our pizza ready. And when you're trying to stretch it, just don't pull across. Think of it like trying to get a, a bed sheet straight on your bed. You're gonna pick it up and kind of flop it a little bit. All right, we already have our parchment paper and the great thing is that you can put the parchment paper right in the skillet. And skillet's hot, y'all. Get it tucked down. Now it's time for our sauce. Just a little bit of sauce. This is our Island, New York, Carolina pizza. We got the South covered with the cast iron skillet. We got the New York covered in the pizza dough and this amazing red sauce. Got the deli to cut some provolone. It's a good melting kind of a cheese. Most pizzas, the cheese can be the star, but we're gonna have our Island ingredients take the show on this one. So we've got our cheese on top. Now it's time to add some of this delicious chicken teriyaki that I grilled outside. If you want the teriyaki sauce, go to alohayallkitchen.com. So we have some charred ch chicken, pineapple, sweet onions, local onions, and bell peppers. We're gonna add some Korean kimchi. Just like people like hot peppers, on theirs, spicy jalapenos. We are gonna add some Korean kimchi to the top. This is beautiful. Let's get this into the oven, this 10 to 12 minutes. Well, today we made New York style pizza and I hope the next time that you go on vacation that you get equally inspired and look, it's got the fold test. A pizza with chicken teriyaki and kimchi. And I know you're excited to hear about the zoodles. You've got to, got to, got to let me know what a hit this was. Look, it looks just like spaghetti. Write to me at aloha y'all, at aloha, Y-A-L-L, -L, at live, L-I-V-E dot com, or get the recipes on my kitchen blog and my website, aloha y'all kitchen dot com. So get in the kitchen, put your pearls on, get your iced tea, 
and cook up some love. Aloha, y'all.